out to intubate COVID patients or PUI patients, but very little discussion regarding extubation when that's actually the most riskiest time for providers. Extubation is usually associated with more coughing um, and therefore more aerosolization of COVID particles. Um, it's important to minimize droplet expulsion so there's less chance of transmission uh, to providers. So only providers directly involved in extubation should be present. So ideally two providers, everybody else should leave the room and if possible it should be conducted in a negative pressure room. This isn't always possible. Um, next, personnel should have PPE attire. They should be wearing N95s uh, and the person actually doing the extubation, which is Erica here, is double gloved. For the ease of you understanding me in this video, uh, I'm not actually wearing PPE or an N95. And it's also important to have communication between the two providers before you actually do this procedure to iron out any creases and anticipate any problems that may occur, uh, such as laryngospasm or apnea, and what you, you may do in the event. As well as this, uh, it's a good idea to practice that your connection easily disattaches at your ET tube and also feeds through the hole adequately of your airway. You can um, conduct extubation within the glass box, but just bear in mind this is not a totally enclosed uh, space. And then next I have some equipment ready. I positioned my yanker here, which is on, near the face of the patient purposely. Uh, and that's to suck out any droplet particles that may be in the atmosphere. You want to actually avoid any suctioning too, as this is an aerosol generating procedure. So just bear, in, bear that in mind and only do it if really needed. Uh, you can give antitussive medications, so drugs such as IV lidocaine, IV remifentanil, or even the use of glycopyrrolate to reduce the volume of secretions, uh, which can help. As well as that, I have some other equipment here. I've got face mask oxygen here, a glass syringe to deflate my cuff, an oral airway if needed, and a mask, an O2 face mask. Now this is usually used to self-contain any coughing. You do want to avoid high flow oxygen as this can also aid um, expulsion of uh, COVID particles. I have a trash can nearby conveniently placed to discard my ET tube immediately. And going back to the face mask, you will have prior knowledge of what face mask fits your patient from going through intubation earlier. But it's a good idea to check the cuff for adequate um, inflation. Uh, this will aid in a better seal. And uh, this patient doesn't have any facial hair, but I would have no hesitation if they have a large beard to shave the beard off again for an adequate seal. Okay, so now for the actual technique, which we, we have named ET tube via mask technique. Uh, you want to conduct this ideally prior to reversal of muscle relaxants, and also when the patient's in a deep plane of anesthesia. You could even consider a deep extubation, which would avoid any coughing too. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to loosen the tape on the patient, okay? And this is to aid fast extubation. So this is nice and loose. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of tape. And Erica, would you mind taping that to the side? Notice how Erica tapes it so that it's not overlapping the 15 millimeter connector here. The next bit is the two-handed approach. So Erica is going to look over to her ventilator and time this part for end expiration uh, when there will be no flow coming up. She's also going to reduce her flows. And at this point, I'm going to hold the ET tube and she is going to loosen the 15 millimeter connector and disattach it. I'm going to put my thumb over we're going to quickly feed the pilot balloon through the face mask 
and also the ET tube through here. And then we're going to reconnect the circuit. Eric is going to proceed to put the flows back up and we're going to carry on with extubation, which involves weaning of the gas. Now, when the patient is ready to be extubated, you basically follow these steps again. So Eric is going to look over to her ventilator, time us for end expiration, um, reduce her flows. I'm going to hold the pilot. She's going to deflate the cuff. Notice how she keeps her, her plastic syringe connected still so that the COVID particles, if present, are self-contained. And then she's going to quickly pull the ET tube out all in one. My palm is going to go over the entrance to the face mask. She'll hand this over to me. I'll reconnect quickly. Notice how she discards her gloves. They go straight into the trash. And then only does she put her flows up she, so she doesn't contaminate any uh, buttons. And then I, we're going to monitor for apnea, any coughing. And if needed, Eric is going to use her APL valve and close it slightly to provide some peak to prevent atelectasis. Um, if there is any coughing, which could you just demonstrate that for us, Sabrina, some coughing here? <laughs> okay. At this point, Eric is going to aid me with a two-handed seal. And this is to reduce the expulsion of particles from the side of the mask again. Now, if the patient continues to cough, as we said earlier, we can use the mask to self-contain the cough during transport. Uh, if not, you can place an N95 mask over the patient. And then it's important that anyone that enters the room following extubation uses airborne precautions for the next 30 minutes.